During the holidays, many people choose to travel. Whether it's gathering with family and friends or even going solo, although solo travel offers freedom, it also comes with unforeseen dangers for those planning to travel alone, especially women. This movie is a must-watch. Jessica's husband passed away unexpectedly six months ago. And to cope with her grief, she decided to take a long trip. She drove her car on a deserted road and encountered a strange Jeep. She wanted to overtake the Jeep, but the driver didn't seem to let her. When she reached a bend, Jessica accelerated and finally managed to overtake the other vehicle. However, the Jeep quickly caught up and started tailgating her. At that moment, a large truck was approaching, but the Jeep refused to give way. Luckily, she managed to overtake the truck. Despite escaping the danger, the Jeep continued to follow her. Eventually, she managed to lose the Jeep. That evening at a gas station, Jessica received a call from her father, revealing that she hadn't told anyone about her trip. While on the phone, the same Jeep arrived. Was it a coincidence? After resting for a night at a motel, Jessica decided to leave the next day. A man wearing glasses approached her for a chat. It turned out he was the owner of the Jeep. He apologized for the incident on the road the previous day. He explained that he was distracted by his phone and didn't notice Jessica trying to overtake. He spoke very confidently. He asked Jessica's name, where she was heading, and even suggested meeting again. Jessica had no intention of pursuing the matter further and was indifferent to his words. After the conversation, Jessica continued her journey, but not long after, she encountered a car blocking the road ahead. Upon closer inspection, she realized it was the man with the glasses. These repeated encounters were certainly not coincidences. Jessica immediately became alert and locked all the car doors. She then tried to drive around the car, but the man in glasses chased her. The man asked Jessica to roll down her window explaining that his car had broken down and he needed a ride to the nearby town. Jessica refused, suggesting that she could go to the town and call a mechanic for him. He then asked Jessica to get out of the car to help him push his car to the side of the road. Jessica was cautious and declined his request, citing her hurry to get on the road. But the man didn't give up, insisting that pushing the car to the side would only take a few minutes. Not wanting to argue further, Jessica drove away. That evening, while Jessica was resting at a service area, her mother called. While she was on the phone with her mother, the Jeep appeared again and Jessica immediately got into her car. As the man in glasses rushed over, Jessica drove off, but her car was blocked by a white car. Jessica repeatedly honked her horn, urging the other driver to move. At that moment, the man in glasses ran over and said, I just wanted to use the restroom and you almost hit me earlier. Are you crazy? Ignoring the man's words, Jessica sped off once again. While driving, she noticed a car following her and immediately decided to call the police. She reported that a man with ill intentions was tailing her. The police asked for her location, but she didn't know. At that moment, the car behind her sped up and overtook her. She realized her mistake. It wasn't the man with the glasses car. After hanging up the phone, her car suddenly swerved and fell into a roadside ditch. Fortunately, she was unharmed upon inspecting her car. She found a large gash in her tire. Jessica's intuition told her that this incident was related to the man with the glasses. As the saying goes, what you fear, you attract. A jeep slowly approached from afar and finally stopped next to Jessica. Indeed, it was the man with the glasses. He didn't pretend anymore after smashing Jessica's car window with an iron rod. He rushed in and drugged her. When Jessica woke up, she found herself locked in a basement. The windows were reinforced and the main door was locked. Even if she screamed at the top of her lungs, no one would come to her rescue when night fell, a light outside the door turned on, and the man entered a while later. Jessica immediately asked him what he wanted, if he wanted money, she could give him any amount. The man laughed at her words. You're not the only one who's said that to me. Jessica was suspicious. It turned out this man was a kidnapper. She wasn't his only victim. The man ordered Jessica to undress. Jessica used the excuse of needing to use the restroom, intending to escape, but unfortunately, she failed after subduing Jessica. The man showed her a video she had posted online, capturing sweet moments between her and her husband. Jessica could never have imagined that this video would attract the man's attention and put her in danger. The man asked Jessica why her husband died. Jessica simply said her husband was not thinking clearly and chose death. But the man kept asking, wanting to know how her husband died. Jessica cried as she said her husband used a gun. Seeing Jessica's pain, the man pretended to comfort her everything would get better. After speaking, he didn't bother Jessica anymore and decided to leave. When morning came, Jessica didn't want to sit and wait for death. So she thought of a way to save herself. She looked through the keyhole and saw a key hanging on the door. To get the key, Jessica took off all her clothes and stuffed them into the door gap. 
Then she hit the door hard, but the key didn't fall down soon. A nail caught Jessica's attention. She went over and tried to pull out the nail with her bare hands, but failed several times. Then Jessica wrapped her clothes around the nail and used all her strength to pull it out. Surprisingly, she successfully pulled out the nail. She used the nail to pull the key in, afraid of making noise. Jessica walked barefoot after opening the door and ran upstairs. Unfortunately, the man with the glasses returned at that moment, and Jessica had to hide in a room behind a door. The man sat at the table enjoying the food he had just bought. Jessica was very hungry but could only swallow her saliva. At that moment, the man's wife called. He lied, saying he was on a business trip and would be back in a few days. In front of his family, the man portrayed himself as a good husband and father. No one knew that in places unseen. He was a pervert who kidnapped women. When he left the kitchen, Jessica seized the opportunity to run. However, the man noticed something unusual and immediately chased after her. In her panic, Jessica didn't watch her step and got her foot impaled by a branch. She tried to suppress her pain and pull the branch out of her foot. But her cries of pain gave away her location. As Jessica reached a stream with the man close behind, she found herself at a dead end, deciding to risk her life. She jumped into the stream. The man didn't follow, knowing there were other women but only one life. After drifting downstream for a while, she managed to get to the shore. Jessica picked up a branch to use as a crutch and limped in search of an exit. But before she could get far, she heard a noise approaching. Could it be the relentless man with the glasses? Jessica hid behind a large tree, waiting for the man to get closer before striking, to her surprise. It wasn't the man with the glasses but a hunter. Her unintentional attack nearly triggered the old man's heart. Condition. Jessica quickly explained that a madman was trying to kill her and that she needed to call the police immediately. The hunter, being a good man, handed his phone to Jessica. Unfortunately, the phone was broken due to Jessica's earlier mishap. Completely devastated, Jessica could only cry and beg the hunter to take her out of the forest. The kind-hearted hunter agreed, seeing Jessica's injured foot. He even gave her a new pair of shoes. Along the way, he kindly offered Jessica food and water. He comforted Jessica, assuring her that the man wouldn't catch up. As soon as he finished speaking, a fallen tree blocked the narrow forest road. Jessica and the hunter tried to move the tree aside, but it was too heavy. They exerted all their strength for half a day, but the tree remained unmoved. There were no other roads nearby, and the hunter was puzzled. In their despair, the jeep appeared again. The hunter told Jessica not to worry and let him handle everything. It must be said that, if the man with the glasses didn't win an Oscar for his performance, it would be a great injustice. The man pretended to be on the phone as he approached the hunter, lying that Jessica was his sister and that she had a mental illness. Jessica quickly said, I'm not his sister, Mr. Hunter. Don't let him deceive you. The hunter asked the man with the glasses, Did you kidnap Jessica? The man with the glasses calmly replied, Of course not. My sister has been having recurrent episodes of her mental illness. Due to the shock of losing her husband, she ran away from home and even jumped into the stream earlier. The man with the glasses spoke clearly and confidently, leaving the old hunter unsure of whom to believe. The man with the glasses rushed to grab Jessica, while she told the hunter to take the man's phone and call the police, although unsure of the truth. When Jessica escaped from the man's grasp, the hunter raised his gun and threatened the man not to follow. The best solution now was to call the police. The hunter had a gun, so the man didn't dare to act recklessly. But the old hunter was still too naive. The man pretended to cooperate, but when he handed over his phone, he suddenly attacked and knocked down the old man, who was unable to resist. The man then picked up a hunting rifle and with a single shot, sent the old man to his death. As the rain began to fall and the sky darkened, Jessica and the man with the glasses began a game of cat and mouse. The game continued until nightfall, with Jessica exhausted, hiding behind a large rock. The familiar sound of a whistle grew closer. Although Jessica had managed to hide, she was shot. She risked her life to run and finally hid in a ditch. As it was dark and surrounded by vegetation, only a miracle would allow the man to find Jessica. Finding it difficult to locate Jessica, the man resorted to psychological tactics to lure her out. The man said, I know you're injured if this continues. You'll bleed to death in two hours. Rather than waiting to die, you could come out and fight me. Don't worry, I play fair. He put his hunting rifle on the ground giving her a minute to come out and take it. Jessica wasn't foolish. Going out there was tantamount to surrendering her life. When this plan failed, the man resorted to provocation. He insulted Jessica and her husband, calling them cowards, and provoked her to come out and fight him to prove her courage. But no matter how much he insulted her, even though Jessica was furious, she stubbornly refused to come out. The man failed again and gave up. 
The next morning when Jessica woke up, the rain had stopped. When Jessica approached a small road in the forest, she saw the man's jeep also heading there. He pulled the old man's body out and buried it in a pre-dug hole. While the man was burying the body, Jessica quietly approached the jeep. While looking for the car keys, Jessica found the man's phone. But before she could call the police, the man returned to the car. Out of options, Jessica hid in the trunk. The man drove on the road, unaware that Jessica was right behind him. Indeed, the most dangerous place is the safest place. Jessica was brave enough to call the police in this situation. The call was connected, but Jessica's whisper-like voice posed a challenge for the police. As she was speaking, the man started looking for his phone, but couldn't find it, so he stopped the car. Through the rearview mirror, Jessica saw the man looking towards the trunk, clearly indicating that she didn't have much time left. So Jessica stood up, used an iron rod in the car to attack the man. Although the man was hit by Jessica until he bled, he didn't give up. He drove with one hand and fought Jessica with the other. It was strange that he didn't stop and fight. After a continuous struggle, Jessica grabbed a knife and stabbed the man's right hand with all her strength. During the struggle, the car started swerving and eventually crashed. The car flipped over. Jessica struggled to crawl out. At that moment, a helicopter flew over the forest. Jessica wanted to call for help, but the noise from the helicopter was too loud. The pilots couldn't hear anything. Jessica went into the forest and found a burnt area still smoking. Jessica used the man's phone to call his wife. She told the wife that her husband was a deranged murderer. The wife, not believing her, thought it was a prank call and asked to speak to her husband. Coincidentally, the man was approaching, hearing his wife's voice. The man was stunned on the spot, unable to utter a word. Jessica then told his wife, My name is Jessica. If this is the last time you hear my voice, it means your husband has killed me. After speaking, Jessica dropped the phone at the man's feet. The wife asked him what had happened, but the man had nothing to say. After bidding his wife farewell, he hastily hung up the phone. His image had collapsed and he became indifferent to life. But if he was going to die, he wanted to take Jessica with him. Thus, a final battle ensued between the two. The situation was tense, thanks to her strong will to live. Jessica found a strength she never knew she had. After being brutally beaten by the man, she successfully fought back. Jessica was finally safe. 